Hi guys, just another quick video tutorial here for you. This one is at the request of one of my online interactive CAD students who wants to know how she can simply make a fitted or shadow band to match the engagement ring that we made in our last lesson together. Now the method we're going to use in this instance is what I refer to as the project and double flow. Now, let's get started. The first stage, we want to duplicate the existing ring's profile at 3 and 9 o'clock. To do that, we draw a single point line from the center of our world, which is 0, 0, being sure to click both sides in the command bar and then clicking just past the edge of the existing ring. So you can see this line passes through both sides. I'm going to move on to a new layer and we're going to select that line and type project into the command bar, being sure to delete input yes, we don't want to keep it, and then click on the surface we want to project onto. Note this is being done in the front view. As you can see, now the lines match the existing profiles at 3 and 9. The next stage is we want to create a rail that passes from one side of the ring over to the other, following the contour of the ring as it goes. So back to the front view. I'm going to make myself active on my target layer. You'll see why in a second. And I'm going to draw an arc from the middle of one profile, which happens to be the quad, to the middle of the other, which also happens to be the quad, as they're both the same. Now if we go back into perspective, you'll see that this arc at the moment is flat. What we're going to do in a second is transform it so that it flows along the outside edge of the band. So we're back into the front view, back to the project command that we used previously on a different layer this time, being sure that delete input says no as we want to keep this arc for later. Click the surface to project onto, the center. Now if we look in 3D, we can see that it's thrown the line onto the surfaces that we chose. Obviously, we've got a few unnecessary ones that we want to get rid of, so I'm just going to turn off my target and my curve 2 layer. And let's tidy up this by first exploding and then just selecting the actual curves that we need to create our rail. But these are the ones at the front. So I think there's two more, a little one there, that's it. Yeah, it's this one. Then we're going to go to Edit, Select Objects, and invert the selection to select all the ones that we don't want. Then we can simply delete these ones without having to find them. So now we're left with just the curves that we need. Now the next stage, we want to get these three-dimensional unconnected curves, which are on that arc at the moment, laid out flat in front, so they're easy to edit. So to begin that process, we're going to analyze length, of the current arc. So there's length, and it tells us it's 28.8. So with that, we can copy to the clipboard. And then let's go onto the base layer, draw a polyline that is 28.8. So I'm just going to paste that length in now. So if we analyze that length, you can see that it's 28.8, which matches the arc. So Next thing to do, we're going to get those white curves by selecting them. And we're going to transform flow along curve. So the base curve currently is the orange curve. We click the end. Then we click the matching end of the green curve. So this translates the curves from the arc to the straight line. Now we don't need these curves anymore, so let's get rid of them before we move on to the next stage. Now these curves are flat, they're much easier to edit. And what we want to do is smooth out the transition from one side to the other. So let's turn off the base layer so we've got a better view. And let's tidy up a little bit more by deleting the overlaps with trim. And then join them together to make sure it's one open curve, which we've got. So to remove the kink, we're going to use circle and tangent circle. And let's go into a different layer so it contrasts. Click on one side of the ring, doesn't matter which. And now you can see the circle is sticking in a tangential fashion between the curves. So I think something about there is good. I left click and then enter to apply without adding a third point and trim away the excess and join together the remainder into one open curve. I'd quite like to refine this line so it's a little bit smoother, especially here. So I'm gonna click the curve, type in rebuild. You can see we've currently got 65 control points. So I'm going to go for half that approximately with 35. Uh, click preview, 
The line looks fairly close there. Um, the deviation is only 0.049 of a millimeter, which is well within acceptable tolerance. So now we want to flow our curve back from the straight line onto the arc. So back to where we were before with transform, flow along curve, select our fitted line, select the baseline, which is the green line, and the target line, which is the orange line. Make sure that rigid is no, it's very important. So click the target line, and there we can see it's translated from the flat onto the arc. If we turn the original ring back on, we can see how nicely it fits against it. Now the next stage is you want to add profiles to the ends of the black line. Uh, if we turn the red profiles on, we had earlier, there they are. And we need to move these from their current position in line with the existing engagement ring to where they would be for the wedding band. So let's select them, go to transform, move, move them from the top quad to the end of the black line or the matching quad. So now we're ready to sweep these profiles from one side to the other. So before we do that, I'm just going to tidy up the model and let's delete any lines we don't need. That's good. And then we're going to go to sweep one, select our rail, select our profile on the left, a profile on the right, hit enter. Make sure I'm okay with the seam position, which is fine. Press enter again. All looks good. Enter one more time to apply. Now my back face settings are set to pink, so I'm just going to reverse that by typing in flip, click on the surface, press enter. Now it's corrected. So if we turn the original ring on, we can see that that top surface is very smooth and nicely matches the contours of the engagement ring. To finish this off, we just got a piece in the back of the ring. To do that, we're just going to take the back of the engagement ring, which matches the profiles that we created from the start. So I'm going to go into the front view and let's go into a different line for the curve. Draw a single point line again from both sides from the center out past the edge of the ring. And then we're going to use the split function um, to split the back of the shank of the existing ring with that horizontal line. There we go. Now let's select the back split piece and let's change the layer on its own onto our SRF1 layer that I've already created. Now I'm going to copy that into the clipboard with Control C. So there we are, you can see it's split. Let's undo the layer change, undo the split, and then paste it back in with Control V. And we just need to move that across from the near edge to the far edge. Make sure we get a snap point. There we go. Now finally, just join the two poly surfaces together and we should have one closed poly surface. Yes, we do. Great. Let's have another small tidy up. I'm going to remove the trim line, the two profiles, they're not needed anymore. And let's have a quick look around. So you can see that our running ring nicely follows that line that we drew. Let me get rid of that too. And it really neatly fits against the existing ring. Well, I hope you found this video tutorial useful, guys. We covered a few key commands, in particular project, flow along curve, rebuild, and sweep one rail. The project and double flow method is a common workflow that I use for creative fitting wedding rings, but it will not necessarily work in all scenarios. However, it's just one of the weapons worth keeping in your arsenal that can also be applied to other surface modeling problems. Thanks for taking the time to watch and listen. If you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comments below. Feel free to share this video with anyone you think you might find it useful. And see you next time.